crazy to think that our TV show aired seven years ago because so much has changed in that time, yet at the same time it feels like it happened just yesterday. We're the Wilson sisters. We live and breathe horses. We have had some incredible adventures and opportunities come up. We have completely changed where we live. We've moved from Northland down to Taupo to the most beautiful property we could ever imagined. And our horsemanship, the way we work with animals, our goals and everything have also changed drastically. And so my goal for this YouTube series is one, to give people a look into our daily lives, give them a little look into the behind the scenes moments of our wild horses journey, how I work with my show jumpers, Kelly's liberty and photography work and the adventures we go on. And two, to give an insight into the way we train and our horsemanship. So one of the most incredible things I've ever done in my life was working with the American Mustangs. We went over there to train five Mustangs over 100 days. Vicky, Kelly, myself and two very good friends. So it was a 100 day event and initially we'd planned to be based at a ranch for the entire time and work with our Mustangs before the competition. But we quickly got a little bit bored, obviously used to training a lot of horses at once and we only had one horse each over in America. And so about four weeks into our journey, we set off on a spontaneous road trip around the Wild West and just took our Mustangs into some of the most phenomenal places. And like True Wilson style, we ended up with 11 Mustangs. We road tripped 5,000 kilometers across the West. We rode through national parks and went on the most insane adventures. But you know, honestly, if we'd known everything in advance, 100% we wouldn't have gone. And I think that's probably why a lot of people don't live with adventure. Because yeah. they probably think it through too much and realize we how don't. expensive or how difficult it's going to be. Where we made a decision like, yep. And because of it, we really had the trip of a lifetime. And uh, in that event, 100 days into the horse's training, I placed sixth overall on my mare, Jackie. And she, uh, she was one of my favorite horses of all time. And I was so proud of how her training had, you know, progressed in that time. And she really taught me a lot. So taking that knowledge um, that I'd learned over there, I came back and in 2016, came to Wild Brumby for the Australian Brumby Challenge uh, over in Melbourne. And that was also, a life-changing experience and really set me on a journey of having a passion for not only New Zealand's wild horses but wild horses on an international scale. And I got um, allocated a 12 hand Brumby which was a little bit small for me but really neat to be able to work on the ground and, and start to put what I had learned into training onto a new horse. Uh, from there, while we were in Australia, Vicky got scouted for the World Championships of Colt starting and she competed in America and Kentucky for 2017 and 2018, winning it both years. Just phenomenal watching her work with a horse that had you know, never been touched and in three days been able to ride it around one of the most gnarly obstacle courses that most of our domestic horses would never have done. And then from there, uh, I spent almost two years traveling the world, photographing wild horses on different continents and learning more about equine behavior and uh, herd dynamics as part of a new book, Wild Horses of the World. Wild horses have been an important part of wildlife on earth for centuries. Yet many herds now face serious threats and very few people can claim to have seen them galloping free across the plains or scaly mountain passes. I have. For this book, I spent over four years researching the world's wildest herds, traveling the globe and living among them. From the remote forests of Canada and snow-capped mountains of America, to the unforgiving deserts of Australia and windswept beaches of New Zealand, I have aimed to capture a raw and honest portrayal of these animals. Their rugged beauty, their unique way of life, and the harsh yet picturesque landscapes that they call home. So for the Wild Horses of the World Tour, I spent weeks and months living out with wild horses in several countries. And it started out just being a sort of photography journey. I wanted to capture these magical photos of wild horses, but it became so much more. It really was a a uh, story of their really harsh survival elements, especially in Australia where they're living in severe drought conditions and then 
over in Canada where their numbers are controlled mostly by predators. And it was fascinating for me, not only understanding herd behavior and how horses communicate, but seeing how they manage internationally. And it's really come back and radically transformed how I work with horses. I'd obviously learned a lot in 2018 when I tamed 19 wild horses and then 2020 I tamed another 10 uh, mares that previous owners hadn't been able to work with. Uh, and using all of that and then the added knowledge that I gained from observing horses in the wild has really stepped it up a notch and now we've got 18 wild he horses here from the 2021 muster uh, and it just makes me realise how far we have come over the last uh, seven years since you know, we started uh, filming for the television show and then obviously back in 2012 where our journey with the wild horses began in general. So before the TV series, we were very much show jumping full time and that hasn't changed except that probably 2015, 2016, I took a little bit of a downfall in the sense that uh, my team wasn't super strong and I sort of lost my passion for it a little bit. And it's taken a few years to get my team back, or a good team back, and to find the passion again. I think I lost the passion because I we were just so busy and, and just so much going on. Um, but I'm very much loving it. I'm, I, I much prefer this way of training, and I think that's a large reason why I love it. Because before, I, I couldn't understand why something was going wrong or not working. But I was actually just missing the pattern of you know all the basics that I had missed. And so I've got a very cool team of um, two rising seven-year-olds, Casanova, my rising seventeen-year-old, who jumps up to Grand Prix, uh, three rising five-year-olds, and two rising four-year-olds. So we're in winter at the moment, and they'll get sort of um, some of them are turned out at the moment, some of them are in training, and they'll get brought back in in July into full work, and then we'll, we'll go through the season. But I'm really excited about that. I've got some really cool horses. So it's hard to believe now that I actually have 15 books published. It was 2014 when my first book, For the Love of Horses, uh, was published and that was a number one bestseller for several months. And at the time I genuinely thought that that would be probably the only book I'd ever published. So to now be considered a career author where I've got two or three books coming out in most years uh, is sometimes absolutely mind-boggling to comprehend. So. I've got several adult non-fiction books, obviously For the Love of Horses, Stallion Challenges, Mustang Ride and Saving the Snowy Brumbies, which follows our journey with wild horses in different continents. And then Taming the Wild, which is kind of like a how-to guide of how I tamed the horses out of the 2018 muster. Uh, wild Horses of the World, which is one of my favourites, following the wild horses in Canada, America, New Zealand and Australia. And then the children's picture book, Ranger, the Kamanawa Stallion, and then a series of eight books, Showtime Adventures, and then an activity guide that matches it. So uh, that's pretty exciting, but it's equally exciting, the books I have planned. So I've got several in the editing processes at the moment, and several others that we're looking to write. So uh, many, many, many books ahead. Another thing we've been super busy with is camps and clinics. So we have been running camps for 15 years now, but after the TV series we started doing nationwide tours, which is where we travelled to different venues around the country and trained sometimes 40 to 100 people at once on saddle fit, um, by the biomechanics of, of how a, a, a rider's position affects the horse's balance, um, how to check your horse's body to make sure they're physically sound, um, sports psychology and goal making etc and, th and that's been really amazing we've met some incredible people through that and I've learned so much about um, my way of training getting to, to experiment on so many riders at once and and then in the same way in my clinics which I, I coach probably eight to twelve weekends of the year around the country I usually have 30 odd riders a day that I'm working through and it's really fun. I'm, I'm very much an analytical person. I like to break things down to its simplest form. And so when I'm coaching, I have a very scientific viewpoint. I, I want to find the simplest pattern. So four years ago, my coaching was X, Y, seven plus four equals minus whatever. And now I feel like it's Y, X squared equals something, you know? So it's, it's much simpler. I, I feel like it can be even simpler. And, I, um, and that's the same when I work with wild horses, I think the pattern can always be easy. And so I'm always studying and learning and changing things and experimenting, which is really, really rewarding because the results um, are so much better in the long run. In 2015, when the TV show came out, uh, we started the brand Wilson Sisters. So more recently, we decided to sort of 
split up, I guess, because a lot of what we were doing was finding our passions. And through the process of, you know, the last several years and the work with wild horses and show jumpers and taming and breaking in horses and Vicky's passion, especially for uh, rehabilitating sore horses, we've actually all discovered our own niche and passion, which is just awesome. But it does mean that we often don't have time to work on all the things that we once did. So uh, Vicky is now working under Vicky Wilson Equestrian and she's got so much going on. She's got obviously starting young horses, rehabbing sore horses, race horses, show jumpers, breeding horses. So she's got massive things happening, which is super exciting. Uh, Amanda is equally uh, passionate and busy with her show jumpers and training young horses and then coaching young riders as well. And then for me, my biggest passion is the wild horses. And I do a lot of work with the wild horses and also liberty and bridalist work with my uh, show jumpers. So we, as we have progressed, obviously have found what we really love about horsemanship and it's allowed us to branch out on our own and really focus on those passions rather than having to kind of do a little bit of everything, which is pretty exciting.